get lipstick on. Ooh. Okay, uh, got it. <laughs> okay, I can edit that. All right. <laughs> So today on That's Classic, uh, we have a special guest, um, somebody that uh, I, I would say vivacious would be a good word, and just somebody that's been in the business so long and uh, just really amazing. Um, today we have none other than uh, the, the woman that played Katie on uh, My Three Sons, Robbie's wife, and uh, is part of the King family and was in uh, the uh, Four King Cousins. And uh, here she is, Tina yep. Cole. So welcome, How are Tina. You? Thank you so much. It's really oh. nice to talk to you. Well, we it's 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 awesome to have you on. And just I just need to say this to the subscribers. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify or whatever, if you want want to actually see us in this interview, go to www.youtube.com slash that's classic TV. And you'll actually be able to see uh, Tina and I, you know, on camera. All right. Having said that, um, so and I got out my jammies just for you guys. So oh, okay. Well, you're looking good. You're looking good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So I'll tell you what. To start, why don't we start with my three sons? Um, you know, Fred McMurray had this special schedule that uh, no one else really <laughs> oh, had yeah. up to that time. Yeah. How did one? How did that schedule work? And two, how it's great that it worked for him, but how did it work for you? <laughs> As an actor, it was a real learning curve. Mm -hmm. it, it was because no one else shot that way except the ones that followed uh, McMurray, like uh, Brian Keith and Henry right. Fonda and John Forsythe, that did the other Federson shows. They called it the McMurray method. Mm -hmm. And he just had this deal. He said, Yeah, he was a big movie star. And at the time, um, there was a television was down here movies were up here and you didn't cross right you never cross because you know a movie star would never lower themselves to do television so uh he said i'll tell you what i work from eight to five period and i'll do a month and or maybe a month and a couple of weeks and then i'll be off and i'll come back and i'll do another month and that's then I have the rest of the year to do whatever I want to do. So normally, and we did, when I was on, we did 26 episodes a season, not wow. like they do now, which is like six, right? Yeah, seriously. Um, so we had to have 13 scripts actually written and ready to go by the time we started wow. uh, shooting. And we did all of his scenes from all 13 shows. We did, uh, if it was, you know, we did the master shots, if it, they, if they included him, we did his close-ups. If it was a two shot, if he walked into a scene, we had to re block the scene, you know, before he walked in and then we, they would start shooting when he walked in. Wow. The first time that happened to me, um, it was the first week of shooting and, um, uh, Robbie and Katie had just broken up off the marriage the day before the wedding. Oh, wow. And so I was in Pasadena up in my aunt's room crying and, and dad comes in and uh, we do the master shot and I've got the tears, the real tears flowing. And we do his close up and I've got the tears flowing and they say, okay, la, let's go to the kitchen. It was like, what? <laughs> and he says, we'll pick katie's close up later oh my god a month and you know there weren't a lot of emotional scenes you know yeah. real emotional scenes in the show right and so i about a month later after he he had left um the, we had the, someone said oh the assistant director said i we've got an extra 45 minutes remember that scene that close up we need to get of katie so he, they gave me a, 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 a Polaroid. I wish I had had stock in Polaroid at the time because we had to have Polaroids constantly. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So they said, this is what your hair looked like. This is what you were wearing. Um, we had to have doubles of everything. Wow. And uh, they said, this is a script. We'll start shooting and we'll block in, uh, you know, 20 minutes. Oh and so God. I had to go back and remember that scene and how I felt. And I, so I ended up wow. doing my close up 
with our dialogue coach, who was a woman standing on an Apple box next to the cram camera reading Fred's lines. Oh my gosh. No, and just reading them, not acting them, not right, emotion. Of course. And yeah. I don't think I had the real tears in my close up, which made me really sad. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, you really learn fast how to work that way. So, um, I mean, there was <laughs> the year that I had the triplets. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny. Um, Don Federson wanted me to really look pregnant. And before, through all music, um, uh, movies and television, women just wore a tied on a pillow, you know, mm -hmm. under their bellies, around right. their waist. He wanted it to look real. So we had a whole suit made for me, a body oh. suit. Oh, come on. And that zipped up the back and it had padding. So the, the first trimester had a little bit of, you know, foam rubber and, and lamb's wool. Uh, and then the next th trimester had a little bit more and it started, you know, padding the bust. Yeah, yeah. By the, the third trimester, you know, it was huge. And he asked me to, um, to come up and walk for, for him with the third, with the last one. So I put on a, you know, a pregnant dress and I walked for him and he said, no, no, uh, not right. Sent it back. When I got it back, it was sewn into the, the body of this suit with rows and rows of fishing weights. Oh, no. Come on. And one that I had to tuck into my bra. So it weighed, you know, 15, 20 pounds. Oh, oh <laughs> man. Walk. So. I would hang these in my dressing room, these three little, it looked like the three little bears, you know, these bellies, <laughs> furry bellies. Every time you open up my dressing room on the set, it was these little bellies would be staring at you. <laughs> this one day I shot nine months pregnant. I shot before I even knew I was pregnant. I shot one month pregnant. I've shot after the babies. And I, so I had to keep changing. Oh my and, gosh. You know, crazy seriously <laughs> how did you keep how could you i mean honestly I, I mean i have an acting background and i know that you have to go into you know you you, you have your bio whatever you have all your thoughts but how the heck oh. do you go back in time forward in time you know oh, and yeah. keep yourself in there yeah it's it was hard at first but but i'll tell you it was really good training <laughs> it was, i bet you know you had to go right there and and you know your hair. The th the thing that was awful is that the your, the hairdo. I don't care for the men or the women. Mm -hmm. When you started the show, you couldn't change it because you never knew when they were going to shoot another little piece of that of that scene. Oh wow! So you had to. Well, there was, and I started with. I had cut my hair off when I got when I had my first child. Mm -hmm. I hated it. So I had to start with a wig, a longer wig, because I didn't want to keep my short hair. Oh, wow. You know? So I couldn't wait till I got that wig off and I got to, you know, <laughs> use my own that. hair. Wow. But it, was, it was an interesting, uh, it, what was nice is um, we, we shot from like June, May or June, and we were finished by Christmas where wow. most shows went all the way through and then they got a couple of months hiatus. But that, but the one thing is people would say, oh, do you remember doing this or that? Do you remember the show when? And I go, you know what? I remember bits and pieces, but we didn't see the whole show unless we watched it on television and wow. it only played once and then it reran in the summer. Well, if you missed, because we didn't have recorders. Right, of course not. Or, you know, so there are lots of shows I go, I don't remember. I don't remember doing that. Yeah, I believe it. I totally believe it when you're breaking it up like that. So did oh, you, yeah. did you, you know, I was reading about, um, you know, how you came about with My Three Sons, but did you actually ever audition for My Three Sons? No, I mean, that never, that's what's weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I had done Hawaiian Eye. Right. And uh, my seven-year contract was cut into one because uh, Jack Webb came in and took over the studio and got rid of all the contract players. Wow. So, yeah. So I was, I was in that group and, but people, I, and I didn't have an agent. I didn't even know 
about an agent. I mean, I mean I would, come on, that is yeah. crazy. Yeah, well, they, they, I mean, Hawaiian Eye, they kind of, same thing. They just called me and said, we want to te- you to test for Hawaiian Eye. And I went, oh, okay, well, I was going to be a teacher. You know, I was wow. in college. Wow. So um, we, uh, okay, I lost my train of thought. No, I was just saying, did um, you actually audition oh, for My Three Sons? So yeah. uh, I just got a call from, from Betterson Productions as it would like it to, to do a show. So I did three characters in, I did two in black and white yeah. um, with uh, William Frawley, you know, when oh, he was, right. yeah. that was ABC. And then right. they moved, which is odd. The show moved to CBS and um, went into color. And I did one show in the beginning of 66 um, where I played a girlfriend of Robbie's. Is that Joanne or something? Jo- like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and I'll tell you a funny story about that later. Um, okay. So uh, I did Joanne and then the King family went, you know, started our own show. Mm-hmm. So I kind of left acting alone and I, of course, no agent. Um, wow. So I was busy, you know, singing and dancing and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they were huge. The King family was huge right then. Yeah, yeah. it was. And and then the cousins started, um, you know, the offshoot of, of the King sisters started on that summer uh, on the Craft Summer Music Hall with John Davidson and, right. and you know, um, George Carlin and Richie Pryor, you know, it was like, oh yeah, oh, we will definitely have we'll to talk about that. that as well, by yeah. the way. I, but, I've got that in my head. Yeah. So I get a call in the middle yeah. of this, in the middle of the, you know, it was dinner and I'm, I get a call from, um, from Ed Hartman, our producer of My Three Sons. And he said, we haven't seen you. Why haven't we seen <laughs> you? And I said, what? <laughs> seen you for what? Well, we've been looking for an actress to play the wife of the oldest son of Robbie. And we haven't, you haven't come in. And I said, well, I've been a little busy. (laughs) And he said, well, would you come in and talk to us? I think, John, that they, I had already, they had seen uh, the Joanne segment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they already had chosen me because usually an, uh, an interview is maybe five minutes, 10 at the most. Oh, sure. It's like thank you. you. Yeah, like, thank exactly. you. Yeah. We'll call you. Yeah, exactly. I was 45 minutes at least with uh, Fred de Cordova, our director. Wow. Before wow. he left to do Johnny Carson. Yeah. And um, and then I was another, at least, I don't know, a half hour or something with, with Ed Hartman, the producer. Wow. And then they took me into another room and there was Fred McMurray and his wife, June. <laughs> and okay, I was that's wild. 20 minutes with them. And so I I um, have my script because I think I'm going now. I was told, I don't know, I was told that they had seen like 2,000 girls. Oh, my They had uh, screen tested like 20. Wow. And they still hadn't found her. So I had my my scenes for my screen test and I went to the elevator to go home and learn them and I figured they'd call me to come back yeah and Virginia Martindale our casting director came running after me the elevator she said wait a minute you didn't sign the contract and I said what contract she said you got the part we start in a week and a half wow just like really it was yeah I know I mean, that's not a tiny part. That is like the like one of those parts every actor waits, oh, praise yeah. happens. Yeah. I mean, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. What did what right. did you talk about with like Fred and his wife? I mean, June Haver was you know pretty big herself. What what did well, what they did were you talk adorable. About? I mean, they were just the sweetest couple. I loved loved them. Wow. They just said wanted to find out about my how my family was doing and, you know, mostly kind of personal things. Um, I think Fred was very involved uh, with Don Federson. Yeah. And Ed Hartman about, you know, he, he really wanted the characters to, to be stable. I mean, the actors, Mm -hmm. you know, have Mm -hmm. stable lives. Um, Didn't want any scandal. I think, you know, I, I never asked that question. Yeah. Um, and so I don't really remember, but it was all kind of per- personal stuff. Uh, De Cordova talked to me about in those days, if you were going to bring in like an, a female into an all male show, I mean, that was unheard of. The, the, 
the uh, audiences would really be upset about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so his conversation was all about how delicate the situation was and, and that I really needed to endear that character to the audience. Wow. That she, she had to be uh, feisty, but not bitchy. She had to be sweet, but not syrupy. Um, all those, and you know, the, the nuances. Right, right. Well, I could see that. But what's, when I think about it, you know, I was that character. I mean, that was me pretty much. I was going to ask you that because <laughs> honestly, I, 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 you know, a lot of people would say, oh gosh, he's, he's throwing out BS or whatever. But the truth is, you were like, I, like I look at you and you're like natural at it. I felt like you were even natural with the triplets. I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, oh, well, well I always I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be a mother more than I wanted to be married. Wow. Okay. I love babies. I just, I loved babies and children. You know, it's my, my whole focus probably in my life has been uh, children's issues, children's, I helped, um, in Los Angeles in what was it 78 maybe mm -hmm. have you been there like a long time how long have you I, been? I have I've been here a long yeah. time um when they started they were going to do uh mandatory busing mm -hmm. I lived in the San Fernando Valley in Sherman Oaks yeah and they told me and my son was going to the seventh grade and they said you're going to be bused to Watts wow an hour and a half drive there would be a policeman on the bus oh man and there would be a policeman on campus. No oh. worry. It was, you know, obviously it, the experiment did not work. No, it did not. But yeah. I joined with a, a whole group of parents to keep our kids home. We formed a, a community school with accredited teachers. We had 250 students, mm -hmm. kindergarten through eighth grade. Yeah, that's you know, amazing. And, and so... And then I, you know, my children's theater here in Sacramento that I did for 20 some years. Yeah. Uh, when my kids' school, the music got cut in my, in elementary school for mm -hmm. under, I think it was third grade and under or something. I took over the music program. Wow. I, children have just, you know, so with the babies being a mom being, I mean, it was natural. all really natural. Yeah. yeah, I can totally see it. You know, a couple of things, and, and I, there's so much about my three sons I still want to talk about, but you, you know, you're talking about two, two major players. I mean, Fred de Cordova uh, <laughs> was kind of like the man. I mean, oh, I, yeah. for people out there that don't realize who he was, I mean, yes, he was yeah. the producer on The Tonight Show, and that's great, and my three sons, but this oh, guy knew everybody. Before? He knew oh, all yeah. the all the old actors. He knew all oh, the players. Yes. Did you know that at the time that when you met him, did you realize no, how powerful? I had he no idea. Was? I had no. I I was so naive. I mean, all I wanted in my life was you know I wanted to maybe be a teacher, but I just wanted to be a mom and a, a wife and a mom. And I mean, I didn't. Wow. None, I was not aware, and also because I grew up with it all of that yeah right it was just kind of part of life I I you know uh my dad was a musical director for Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney and right. Doris Day and you know I, I mean, come I on mean, people were around James do you remember um that uh, uh what is it 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea oh gosh heck yeah you're talking about the movie with uh Kirk Douglas and James Mason. Yeah, loved it. Still one of my favorites. Uh, James Mason, Captain Nemo went down into the Nautilus and he played that organ. Yeah. You know, the window would open up and he'd play. Well, that yeah, was I love my it. dad. That was my dad playing. Oh, so wow. James would come over to the house and learn how to look like he was playing the, the organ. James Mason came over to your house? Yeah. I mean, the, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to take that segue. What the heck was James Mason like off camera? Because he was always that character. Like, this, oh, yeah, he know. was. He was that character. But, you know, wow. I was also little. I was a little yeah. girl. Right. So I'm busy, you know, out swimming and stuff. And, you wow. know, these people, I mean, Hoagie Carmichael would come over. We wow. had a music room attached, or separate from the house in the back. And with full bar, big couches, grand piano, organ, recording booth, all this. Wow. And so everybody would hang out after record dates or, you know, television shows or what, radio shows. 
and because my dad did Fibber McGee and Molly, you know, all those shows. Oh my gosh. And so it was always, you know, party central in the music room. Wow. And Hoagie Carmichael would come at like three or four in the morning, drunk as a skunk. Oh my God. Get me out of bed and wrap me up in a blanket and take me out to the music room and sit me on the piano and play, I don't know, Georgia. I mean, I don't know what song. Are you, I mean, you gotta be kidding me on this. And he said, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to publish this until you tell me if you like it. I'm like four. (laughs) four You know, it just, so, I mean, when I did my screen test and Gary Cooper walked in, that was with Warner Brothers. I had no idea who he was. What? Was wait, old. whoa, 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 wait a minute. Oh, he was an Honestly, old man. one of my idols. How did he that was, happen? I, well, he, because I was 14 and he was, well, he probably was only 35, but. And he but, comes walking, he just casually happens to be there or was he part of the screen test? Well, it was kind of fun. Um, uh, he was best friends with the director and he, um, they were going duck hunting. So he was dressed in jeans and a, you know, a, a flannel shirt and wow. scruffy beard and a little wire rim glasses. And his, the director said, I want, before we go, come over to the, I've got to do this screen test with this young 14 year old girl. And so Gary came with him and then he had him just walk in because it was a personality test. It wasn't a, a scene. And he just walked in, Tina, I'd like you to meet Gary Cooper. I didn't know who he was. He oh looked, looked like an old, you know, farmer. Wow. And I, wow. And I, I put my hand out. And I said, hello, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, I, I, it feels me now when I think about it. Yeah. They wanted me to swoon. They were hoping I would swoon, I'm sure. And I, of course, I didn't. Yeah, you're 14. I mean, it's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a big difference. So I didn't know, you know, I mean, I did, I think, Probably the the most well, I liked I loved the Beatles. you know, I met the Beatles. That was fun. But but uh, Robert Redford was my he was my only movie star crush. Well, so I when, think for when I met Bob, women, it was really fun. Yeah, well, tell me tell me about meeting Robert Redford, because all the women out there are going, What? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, my my best friend in the whole world is um boyfriend. Uh, was Bernie Pollock, and he was he dressed. He's Sidney Pollock's brother. I was just going to ask you, yeah. is that who we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, okay. And he dressed ever, you know, he dressed Harrison Ford and Dustin Hoffman, and and of course um, Bob. And I'd go. I went to the set, and so we went out. We had lunch. <laughs> oh come on! Wow. I went to visit him on the set of Waldo Pepper. In Florida, oh, when they were doing the flying scenes. I love that movie. Yeah. I know. And, you know, we just, I mean, it was really exciting for me because I thought he was just, I'd never really had a, a movie star crush. Yeah. But he he did it. I even counted his moles in the way we were. <laughs> <laughs> what was he, what was he like offset, by the way? I've never heard anything bad about him. What was oh, he? No, what was he no like? very charming, very nice, but really simple, you know, mm-hmm. not. You know, not impressed with himself at all. Wow. Just, a, just a nice guy. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. That is just yeah. too cool. So, um, your was it your uh, uncle? There was somebody that helped start Warner Brothers Records. Am I am I right? That on was that? my uncle Jim Conkling. Yeah. So, yeah. because I read something where then at fourteen you were you were working with Warner Brothers drama coaches, and I was like, was that the tie in there? Is that how that happened, or what? Yeah, crazy, crazy. Uh, um, one of the so Warner Brothers was doing a lot of series work, TV series. They had yeah. Sunset Strip and Bourbon Street Beat and and Hawaiian mm-hmm. Eye and you know all those shows. Yeah. And one of the producers, I think it was Bourbon Street Beat, and I can't wish I could remember his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, had written a rock and roll song, and rock and roll was new. Right. Really, right. you know. And he wanted to use his song in the TV show. So he uh, brought it over to my Uncle Jim in the record department and said, could you have your arrangers make an arrangement and record this? And Jim said, you know, 
it, it's it's really it's a, a teenage medium it's a kid's thing i've got some teenagers at home let me give it to them and see what they can do oh my gosh so i happen to be down in los angeles visiting my dad and seeing my cousins for the summer so four of us um got this it was oh, and it was so corny heel to heel toe to so toe and soul to soul wow <laughs> i know yeah that was really <laughs> deep and uh so we we made um and and my cousin lex diazavedo um be, all went on to do the music for sunny and share oh wow you know, i mean he's he's an amazing he, he did a lot of arranging mm -hmm. for the king family and the king cousins and you know all that yeah yeah and he was you know he was four, 14 as well i mean we were all 14 oh my gosh and uh do you know irving taylor remember that name he was a comedian a script a really good, good writer yeah his Sorry. Son. Yep. anyway and jim's daughter candy so the four of us made an arrangement we uh made up a dance we sang we did a little wow. recording and they wanted to show it they wanted us to show the the uh executives and the producer at warner brothers i mean what an opportunity that is crazy but we were just doing our uncle a favor you know we didn't we're just right yeah hanging out in the summer and doing this is fun but we did a lot of that stuff i mean my cousin sang on on uh uh, high hopes with frank sinatra oh we, we did a lot of background stuff you know wow and, yeah so um uh we went to the studio and we done it had done our little bit for our uncle and we started to leave and they asked me to stay wow and pretty i went in back into the the office and all these men started walking in they asked me to sit down stand up put your hair up put your hair down smile turn around and asked me to wait and then they called me back in so we'd like to screen test you oh my gosh this is just crazy no I, I was like sitting on the stool at schwab's you know i mean it was it is it literally is like yeah. that and so i don't know i'm 14 what's a screen test <laughs> so they called my mother and she said of course so two days later later i'm in makeup having a screen test they liked me i didn't knock them out that much but they liked what they saw I guess yeah. the, the film liked me. Yeah. So they asked me if, if I would study with their drama coaches in the summer times. Uh -huh. So I, for four uh -huh. years, I would go, when I'd go visit my father, I'd go study at Warner Brothers. And I mean, that was like heaven for me because I loved, I loved, I was always into fantasy and play and I would, I would wander the streets of New old New York or oh. burned out German village or the, you know, the, 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 the Mexican yep. guest of town, you know, and I just, I just loved it. And that was on my time off, you know, when I wasn't working with the drama director and he had like, I, I wish I could remember all the people that were in the classes. I know Max Bear Jr. was there. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, he did, you know, Beverly Hillbillies. Yes, bro. Yeah. The Everly Brothers were in the class. The uh, Everly Brothers were in the class? I sang backup for the Everly Brothers in oh. one of their albums, you know, their records. Oh, I mean, yeah. I sang with, in fact, my three of my cousins, we sang with the Everly, on an Everly Brothers thing with three guys that later became the Letterman. Oh, wow. But they weren't the Letterman then. They were just friends of Jim's, of my uncle's. You know, said, oh, hey, my we gosh. need some guys. We need some girls. Come on and wow. sing this. Wow. You know, so it was just like, we were just having fun. I mean, seriously, you're just in the thick of it. That is one of the coolest yeah. stories. What, what Do you remember when you were walking the Warner Brothers lot? Do you, do you remember being, you know, on any movie sets or anything that you were like, oh, wow, this is shooting right now or... No, you know, no. Shows, All no. I wanted was the, you know, the the sets. I mean, the, yeah. like the main streets. Right, um, right, right. To yeah, be on those. I didn't in my little, you know, humble brain. I don't know. I. Well, you're I 14 to 18. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't interested in that. I just, right. in fact, when I was writing my book, um, I had asked my my high school friends, my best friends, that are still really good friends. That's awesome. Um, I, I said, did I ever come home from visiting my dad in LA and tell you what I had done? Yeah. 
And they said, never. We had no, all we thought you were just going to visit your dad. I never said, oh, and I, so I had this screen test. Oh, I met Gary Cooper. Oh, I, you know, I was hanging out with the Everly brothers. I mean, I just wow. it never, they didn't even know. Oh, wow. Because it was just kind of, you know, life. I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So, crazy. so tell me this, Fred McMurray, I I, I, I interviewed Barry Livingston as well. Oh, all right. Yes, we, had a, yes. we had a wonderful interview. Great guy. And just, great, great stories. Yeah. And um, he, I asked him about, uh, about Fred. And he was like, uh, and by the way, I also had John Davidson on who also worked with Fred on, I think it was Happiest Millionaire. And family. He, and or, was it family band? Family or band, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that yeah, yeah that that came up. Maybe that was the one, and I'm mixing the two up. But I know that he had worked with them. And yeah. he, in both cases, they said that. Well, John Davidson said, "Look, Fred was a clarinet player, and <laughs> and he became an actor, but it wasn't like that's what that's he was right. trying to do." Yeah. And then Barry was saying that he kind of kept to himself. Like even when he left the show, Barry was like, you know, it was like a like a handshake like well wish you the best kind of thing <laughs> that's, yeah that's kind of Fred yeah what was he like with you like because with obviously me, you're 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 a female I mean it's, a, it's totally kind of, different totally yeah. different. um when he the, well I'll tell you on the set for instance yeah I think he was very shy actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if someone would come onto the set he'd be all of a sudden the newspaper would come up Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because he was snobby or anything. It's just that he didn't know what to say. Mm. He was just, until he got into a, his role on this, uh, in the scene, he was a totally different person. But with me, they also said that, you know, there's a joke that he, you know, had every nickel he ever made. Right. Uh, and he was wealthy very wealthy because he didn't have yeah. income tax, you know. Yeah. But, and he owned, what, the Miracle Mile, you know, right. now that land. Yeah. Um, but he would go in and have the, the prop man make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. He wouldn't go into the commissary. Oh, wow. He wore the same cardigan sweaters for 12 years. Wow. I mean, he's, you know, just really down to earth. Simple guy. Um, with me and they, they tease that, you know, he, he wasn't generous with gifts or anything like that. Mm -hmm. right. I got the most beautiful huge bouquet of flowers my first day from wow. fred and june um every time we do a junk you know a publicity thing mm -hmm. or a benefit or he was loving big hugs and he was so kind to me he wasn't standoffish at all wow and, um after the show and after don grady and i broke up finally for real mm -hmm. um every he would come to me every time he'd see me are you in love yet i've oh. got to find you a man i want you to be ma happily married you've got to find somebody both he and his wife were just sweet people to me oh yeah. i love you never seen wow yeah. wow now the other one is um now first of all i i hadn't put that together that you had worked with william frawley when you were playing the other characters so yeah. you actually did experience him and uh, William Demarest. Yeah. Now, so in the case of Barry, he really enjoyed oh. William Frawley because he was like, they were like buddies and he was like, you know, kind of took them around. So oh, yeah. And doing pranks on, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, buying him surfboards and, you know, and going, taking the ball games. Right. But they were little kids and he was great with them. Yeah. To me, he was um, a drunk. He was a womanizer. He was gruff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the boys, if I, you know, we've been asked that as a panel. Oh, I'm sure. Your favorite. Of course, the young boys, you know, I mean, Barry and Stanley. Yeah. Holly, for sure. For me, it was Demarest. Demarest yeah. was kind. He was gruff on the outside, but so he was marshmallow goo on the inside. Wow. Wow. And he could tell stories of you know you say one word and he's got a story that could go on for a long oh, time yeah he made and lost so many fortunes he really he was he was a, a comedian he did vaudeville he was a, 
uh, an agent. He was a promoter. He was a boxer. He was a this. I mean, the man did, you know, wore so many hats. Wow, I didn't realize that about William Demarest. Yeah, wow. it was just fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love I love hearing that. That I was so curious about that in, with both of them because yeah. dealing with a woman versus a man, especially for that time period, would be very different. You know. Oh yes. Oh yeah. That, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Yeah. So okay, you mentioned uh, Don, and and I know you've you you know <laughs> talked quite a bit about this, but um, it and I got to admit I was kind of blown away. I I I guess I was out on the outside there. I I never realized you guys were an actual item. Did um. First of all, why do you, you know, I, okay. I heard that he obviously did not want you for the role. Oh he yeah. Other version and all this, but what I'm curious yeah. about is when did he actually tell you that? And how did you not know it for like, a, like two years? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. It would have been really, really difficult. Um, that was kept away from me. I mean, he was professional, you yeah. know, we, we, I um, mean, at first it was very awkward, um, you know, because we had to do all the make out, you know, uh, the necking scenes in the first yeah. week of shooting. And, and it's not like you go and you, and you, you know, you over lunch or coffee or something, you don't sit down and get to know each other. You just, here's your script. Okay. You're supposed to, you know, be making out on the couch. God. So there's no introduction. There's no getting to know each other. And so wow. we were just, you know, awkward. And the court of a cut one scene, we were on the couch and all this chaos was going around us and all we were just, you know, just kissing and loving each other and, yeah. and not paying any attention to anybody else. And then tramps barking and the boys are, you know, running back and forth, <laughs> Charlie screaming at him and total chaos. And and dad comes home and we get up and say, oh, he says, where is everybody? Oh, no, there's nobody home. Because we were just, you know. Oh, my so gosh. Like, it was so awkward at first that Decorda cut the scene and he said, okay, we're going to go to something else. You go back in the back of the soundstage and practice kissing for a half an hour. Because you got to look like you like each other. How awkward was that, by it the was, way? It was, doing that. I yeah, mean, we had to go back and go, okay, well, I guess we go, if I turn my head this way. <laughs> oh wow but but we were both professional mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah he'd been, he'd been around a long time himself yeah, yeah so we learned you know we learned we we, we played at husband and wife really well yeah and it wasn't until but I had been married too you know so oh, right right and, right and and then I was separated and we we started singing together actually in doing telethons oh, and because we're both singers he said well let you want to do a couple of songs and I said, yeah let's that be fun yeah and so we in rehearsing i mean there was a moment where we just it was like we're singing and it was like oh <laughs> this is wow. different wow and and we actually kissed and it was like oh, okay that was that wow hmm, okay we can't, we can't do that anymore that we'd want to go there and it just kind of grew from there and huh. when we actually fell in love and you know he said well I, okay I have to admit something to you yeah. <laughs> and he told me that he was really against me me being Katie not against me personally but you know he didn't feel that he wanted a he wanted really wanted a Peggy Lipton or a Ronnie Troop a yeah. surfer girl you know tall yeah. and thin and you know straight hair and here I am this round bouncy how did thing. you feel about that at the in that in well, that, that, at that, that time, like at that time I was like yeah well they knew better didn't they you know okay the cast, I got you. casting directors knew yeah now but, you did I now this is also what I what I read yeah. or I heard is that he at one point wanted to get married you at one point wanted to get married but in both cases you did not get married. Why do no. you think it is that you never actually got married? I I think about it now, you know, and I wonder, I don't know why. I know at the time he had moved, he was, he was no longer doing the show. He didn't do the last year. Right. And he had moved a couple of hours away. 
I wasn't ready to leave my home, my family, my career, my whatever, mm -hmm. and move away. I was, I was, I didn't want to leave that security. Right. And I just wasn't ready. I was madly in love with him. Wow. But I just, I wanted to keep things the way they were for a little while. Mm -hmm. And we tried that for a couple of years, actually. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. And uh, finally, he said, well, come live with me. And I said, I can't. I had a little boy, you know, and I didn't believe yeah. in that anyway. I'm still old fashioned that way. I got you. <laughs> you know? I, got you. I get it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he said, well, I need to find someone who will. And he married. And then they brought us back together for, I didn't talk to him for almost a year. And they, we got back together for the, it was one of the first reunion shows, I think. Mm -hmm. And they, they, it was odd because um, we did it with the Partridge family. Yeah, they were two widowers, widow, widower. I heard about, I heard about that. Even but Barry said odd. that was the weirdest deal. Combination because we were on CBS, they were on ABC. Yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't understand it, but it's okay. You know, yeah. and they, they brought us all back. They brought uh, Tim Considine and Meredith McRae. Wow. Uh, back who had been on, you know, in the early years. Yeah. Definitely. And, and uh, none of the girls. I wondered why the girls from the Parsley family weren't on there. Just oh, the boys. Is that, is that bizarre? Yeah. It was yeah, just. Where, where was Susan Day? Where was she? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, um, and and Don, they asked me to sing a song, and I sang a song that Don wrote for us. Wow. A lot of his songs from his first album were about us. And one of them was, it was a song called Story. And I sang it on the show. And the the last line, is, you know, uh, I get teary when I think about it. Um, sure. I'll tell us I'll tell you a story they made of our lives. They brought us together like husbands and wives. Mm. The roles we played, the babies we made, we almost believed. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now that it's over, they tore down our names. They've, we've stripped off the makeup, but something remains. The place that you feel li lives in me still. It always was there. Mm. You know, and I sang mm. that on the show. Wow. And he, he I don't know if he, he must have recorded. I don't think he played the piano. On it. I can't remember. Um, that but is he, beautiful. He came to me after the show and he said, I've made a mistake. I'll call you when I'm single. Oh. oh and he did. So he a did. few months, yeah, several months later, he called and he said, Okay, I'm single. And we started going together again. I was, I now, I mean, it'd been what, seven or eight years. I mean, I was. Wow. And I was ready. And I, he asked, he decided he wanted to try his hand at Broadway. He was going to leave California. And he said, come with me. Oh. And I said, I said, I will as your wife. No, he said, as my friend. Oh, come on. And I said, I, I can't, I can't. And he's so, you know, he, two weeks, you know, he was gone. So I had asked him to marry me. He wasn't ready, you know, and, and, you know, it was, it was really, oh, I was heartbroken. I was just devastated. I believe it. No. Oh man. That is, uh, yeah. that is, that is really heavy. I mean, that really is. That's yeah. just, that's just so hard. Um, wow. Well, I, I, gosh, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the honesty of it. You, you kind of got me on that one. Um, the, the, um, and by the way, he went on and he was quite successful. You know how like people are like, hey, I want to go try my musical oh, career. And people is. are like, what a fool, whatever. This guy was, oh. I mean, he did the theme song for the Phil Donahue show. Oh, yeah. He did, um, God. You know, I, FX, remember FX for, right. um, uh, it was uh, uh, Michael, who did yeah. Phantom, the first one? Uh, 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 I, Michael Crawford. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. Which yeah, I saw him and he was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, he did a lot of stuff for Disney, for yeah. the parts and all that. He was so talented. Yeah, really, seriously. I talented. loved his music. Yeah, I can see how he really was leaving for something that meant a lot. Yeah. Because you two had that pilot um, that 
that he didn't want to do anymore because oh. he was done. But yeah. That was a natural. That, that was, I know. You know? Meant, well, what he, his decision really affected my my career, my life. Oh, big time. You know, huge. He didn't think about that. Right. You know, and how are they going to keep Katie and the triplets on without without their son, without dad, you know, exactly. with their, and their father and their, the, the brother and the son. It, he just really affected everybody's career that way. He was burnt out. It sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he all the, I'm sure that uh, Barry talked to you about the, you know, hearing the, because his dressing room was above them and he'd be, you know, he'd be give, keeping the beat and playing and yeah. You know, take a broom and say, stop it. Exactly. You know, yeah. That was in the classroom when they were little, <laughs> he was always playing. Wow. That's pretty cool. Jesus. Yeah. We've been talking for, for a bit here, but you are <laughs> so incredible to talk to and I love your energy and I swear to God, I feel oh. like we have met before, but anyway, um, I want to <laughs> know, I also heard in, in one of your interviews, you told a story that literally I felt, um, for lack of a better ter term, like uh, tingles go up my arms. You did a, some kind of performance with your with your cousins, I believe it was. And you said that, and I'm not sure if it was a cousin or a friend, was taking photos of this performance. And when the photos came out, one of the photos oh. had like, like some kind of image on it that shouldn't be there. And can you... Yeah. Can you Tell me something. I carry, that, that you know. Insane. Okay, you didn't make me cry. Okay, well, I'm sorry. That photo listen. that I carry that photo with me. It's a. I put that in the cover of my date book. Oh, Every wow. year I transfer it because it means so much to me. Mm. Um. Before, so the cousins reunited after 30 years, mm -hmm. and we were playing our first show at the Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood. Yeah. I was a little nervous. I had had some vocal problems where I, I lost my voice for several years. I mean, my, you know, the because I always sang lead. So mm -hmm. I, was, I lost my highs. In fact, I had to do a, I did a play, The Boyfriend, where the, the, the madam of the Dubonnet was, she was the head of the girls' school in the play. Yeah. And I lost my voice. I did the audition an octave. I sang everything an octave lower. Wow! I had I sounded like more uh, Maurice Chevalier. And <laughs> <laughs> I never forget the first time I saw my Franny, you know. <laughs> and I had to do the whole show an octave lower. It and it it had started to come back, but there was still a couple of like in the middle that break. It was like the yeah. Grand Canyon, and I asked for a blessing uh, uh, and my my cousin's husband gave me a blessing and in our church we we do that we we mm -hmm. do healing blessings and things sure and and, uh, and then I worked with someone and he said you're gonna you know he blessed me that everything would be fine and that I would have the notes and all that I worked with a a man who does energy work mm -hmm. sure I know uh, I'm familiar yeah and you could do it on the phone. I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. He wasn't able to work with me the day of the performance. His son also has that gift. Mm -hmm. I worked with Matthew on the phone. He didn't know me from Adam. He had not sure. worked with me before. And he said, your moms are going to be with you on stage. Gosh, he said, it just came back. I'm sorry. That really. Yeah, I know. And he said, you angels will be with you during the show and my girlfriend was taking pictures from the audience she took pictures just with her you know camera of every number a couple of pictures from every number that after the show she said okay tina i want you to see this it's really odd she was going through every number showing all the pictures there was this picture of the way we sang, God only knows, you know, what I'd be without you. Oh, and we did it with video of our moms and the family oh. behind us. And 
in this photo, it was the only photo that wasn't perfectly clear. There was, and all it was were these, it was on stage and you could see the four images. You could see these auras over our heads and where my mother stood next, in where I am, on where I was always on the right of the group, was this big cancer ribbon that was like illuminated. It was like pink and gold and this huge, and he, she had breast cancer. Oh my God. You know, and I, it, I looked at that and it was like, hmm. they really were there. They really were with us on that stage. And I, as I say, I carry that picture with me mm. every day. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Well, and I, I had about... every note. I want you to know. <laughs> wow. And talk about validation. I mean, yeah. you know, some people you feel it, but to actually see it, oh, that's really neat. To see that picture was like, I mean, it, it just blew me away. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm so <laughs> glad you really... remember that. Yeah. I just, that one really got to me. I was like, that is one of the wildest things I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, it's just because I, especially just because of how your family is like, uh, you know, you talk about music, but I mean, it's like, you've just been enveloped in it your whole yeah. life. And then oh, to yeah. have your mom be that anyway, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Thank you. Sure, of course. Um, well, listen, Tina, I loved talking to you. I mean, I loved it. You have just an amazing life. And uh, I, Bye. you know, I, and I, I will get the book. And by the way, wait, before we go, you got to tell everybody, how do they get the book? What are their options? Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, I was going to bring that up if you didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it's um, My Three Lives. Mm -hmm. and it uh it's on amazon and barnes and noble you can i'm the the um barnes and noble online not in the store as far as i know okay. it just came out on um kindle and i'm busy i'm right now uh recording the audible oh so wonderful. that'll come out soon if i can get get through it um it's it's being received so well. I'm so thrilled mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I thought, okay, what if, why I don't have, I have nothing that I'm recovering from, mm -hmm. except, you know, except maybe a failed marriage, but yeah. I, I, um, you know, I didn't suffer from battle with drug addiction yeah. or alcohol or, or depression, things that are really, you know, really yeah. important yeah. things. Um, I had lots of highs and lows, but, and it was an interesting life. But I thought, well, why would someone want to read about someone that didn't have to struggle that much, you know? Yeah. But I'm finding that it's, it's inspiring for people. And I, I think people want to know, you know, they need something that's uplifting. Right oh, now. definitely. And it is. I think it's fun. I even got some. I even have some recipes in the back. Okay. I got lots of pictures throughout the book. I didn't want to do just a clump of pictures in the middle. So I've got the pictures with the stories for the most can, part. Can if if people go, I I'm pretty sure you have a website. Am I correct oh, on that? You know what? If they go to my Facebook page, yeah, um, they can order it there, and I will autograph it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's Good to know. My page. Well, I'm doing that then because well, I I want that one. Um, that that sounds good to me. You said, by the way, um, I saw. I don't know if you were closing the interview or what, but you actually said in relation to what you were just talking about, happiness is a choice. Yes, it is. I so, well, well, I, I'm just curious. Like, I get it, but at the same time, what well, where do you think that is coming from when you say that? Well, I think it's coming right actually from my mother from Yvonne King, uh, who, she was one of the most positive people that I've ever known. A real, she was a real, uh, I mean, I really looked up to her um, that way. She created the King family. I mean, there was nothing she couldn't do. She just, if she said, I wanna do this, she did it. Yeah. But I, I, my cousins tease me and, 
you know, it's, they call me Pollyanna, put on my rose colored glasses, or they'll go, oh, fiddle de dee, it's just, you know, it's not, tomorrow's another day. You know, it's because I choose to be happy. I choose to see the good. I choose to see the, the beauty. Um, and I think, I think that my mother instilled that in me. Mm-hmm. I got you. And I sure beats the alternative. It does. I agree 100% with you. I feel exactly the same way. It's true. So, well, let's, we'll (laughs) we'll end on that high note because that's about as as good as it gets. So, um, anyway, thanks just a bunch. Oh, you're welcome. It's been a wonderful night with you. (laughs) Call me anytime. All right. (laughs) And I'll dress, right? I appreciate that. And I'll be in touch for the book. Great. For sure. Okay. Right. Thank you, John. Thanks a bunch, Tina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you're notified when I release a new episode of That's Classic. And in case you missed any of the old episodes, go check them out. Like Henry Winkler from Happy Days or Jerry Mathers from Leave it to Beaver or Judy Norton from The Waltons. There's so many. Enjoy. <laughs>